Good evening to everyone. Well, since the, uh, the song was my confession, I have to do my confession about the study tonight. It's, um, it's based on something that we've been, a study that we've been doing since um, January. I, uh, it's open to all, and uh, it's based on a book from Joanna G. Angelis. It's uh, auto-discovery, auto-awareness. And uh, comes this theme of coming out of the comfort zone. So do, would anybody like an opportunity to get out of the comfort zone and come over here and just introduce yourself? Yes? No? <laughs> it is coming, well, it's uh, coming out of the, the zone of comfort, this comfort zone. Um, coming here is always, it's always a challenge. It's always a new study. It's always new ideas, new um, points of view. And I hope I can share with you some of it. Um, Joanna is, uh, is uh, her, her picture is right there. She is the mentor of this house. And um, I'm going to start tonight with, it's a prayer from this book. It's called Safer de Luz from um, Emmanuel and uh, as, as written by Francisco Candido Xavier, Xavier. And he says, Lord, enlighten our understanding tonight so we get to know our past through the consequences we live today. What does he mean here? I guess from, my, from what I understood is whatever I am today, the situation, whatever life brought me, whatever is happening to me, by the law of the cause and effect, it's something that is a consequence from the choices I've made in my past. My past lives, my past uh, days in this incarnation, doesn't matter. But whatever I, whatever you saw, you, you will uh, have it back, right? But enlighten us this way, particularly in order for us to discover with no mistakes the straighter paths that connect us to your way. So I guess everyone here is trying to um, get better, grow, no? And if that's the goal, that's the objective, one of the, where do we start? Where do we start to become better? If it's not with us, within ourselves, right? So when we look at this, uh, at this uh, picture here, I call comfort zone the, the red circle. Comfort zone is where I feel safe, with everything is familiar. I know what's gonna happen. I know the consequences of what I do. And then there's an orange place, which is called, which, I, which we call fear, fear zone. This is where I'm afraid of getting out of the house. I'm afraid of getting out of myself. I'm not sure if I can do it. I'm not sure if I, am I ready to do it? I don't think so. I'm afraid if what others will think of me. So uh, others' opinions is very important in this area. And then if I go beyond, if I'm able to step out, I get into a learning zone, that yellow zone. The learning zone where problems, it starts to pop up, right? And then we start calling these problems as challenges. We learn with our problems. <coughs> we learn to deal with them. We overcome them they become, okay, I can deal with that. Then I see, I start changing the, the way I view my problems. I, mm. If these problems help me grow, I'm gonna start calling them as challenges. It's a challenge for me to get this done or to learn another something new or to overcome something different. And as we grow, 
we start seeing all this as opportunities, right? Life is giving me opportunities to grow, to learn. It's, I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not as, I don't have as much fear as before. And as, as I uh, continue in this journey, I start getting new skills, learning new skills. A new language, a new place, a new map, a new opportunity to grow. And then this becomes my comfort zone, right? From the red, I have all that orange. Now I, knew I, can, I know how to speak English now, I can go out, I can find a new job, I can find a new work, I have new ideas, I have new friends, I have new places to go. And then we get to the growth zone. This is where our, our dreams are, our goals are, desires, all this that comes with us, this light that comes with us when we are born, this desire to do something different, something bigger than me. So let's go one by one. My comfort zone, very safe, very familiar, like my couch. Very nice, by, by the way. It fits four people in there very comfortably. My whole family. My couch, my house, my car, my, my, my. Or I can expand that to people. No, my comfort zone with people. I deal with my spouse, I deal with my kids, I deal with my family, I deal with my friends, but I don't allow anybody else in my comfort zone. My, my, my. My language, my country, my understanding, my point of view, my flag, my ideas. How many mice? But is this comfort zone limited to this? Can we have a comfort zone in our beliefs? If I believe it's possible, it's possible. Hmm? Impossible is a fact. It's not a fact, it's an opinion. And what about St. Francis, what does he tell me about this impossible? You start with the necessary, do what's possible, and all of a sudden, you're doing the impossible. It takes one step. It takes my willing to get out of the house. It takes my willing to get up from the couch. Right? What about our thoughts? Is there a comfort zone in our thoughts? So when we study the gospel, there is a part where Jesus starts um, inviting all his saw these people to follow him, right? They will become his disciples. And when he comes to Matthew, Matthew, he was a tax collector. And at that time, not today, it doesn't happen today anymore. But at that time, nobody liked the tax collectors. Right? I don't know why. But he used to collect taxes from uh, people to pay the Romans. And uh, they were called publicans. And Jesus comes to Matthew's home, and he is inviting everybody for, for, for dinner. Right? So you're going to see publicans. You're gonna see poor people. You're gonna see sick people. You're gonna be all. You're gonna see all kinds of people that were not allowed in the temple. Why? Either because of their of their career, their tax collectors. Either because of their um, sex, um, gen, or just because they have any physical problem. They were not allowed in the temple. 
And then the Pharisees, they were the doctors of the law, they were studying the, the, the Torah, they would say, why is your master eating with all these people? What does Jesus tell us? Tell them. It's just not the, world, the ones who are healthy who need a physician, but those, who are, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire compassion, not sacrifice. God is asking us for compassion, not for our sacrifice. For I did not come to call the writers, but the sinners. He came for us, people. Right? I especially think that he came for me. What about this, this comfort zone in our emotions? Is it easy to be in our depressed self, not getting out of the house because it's too painful? Is it too easy to be in our own happy self and not notice somebody else that's suffering next to us? What was the big difference in the message that Jesus brought, brought us? All the religion said about love. But when he came, he said, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That was the big difference. That was the big paradigm change, right? He's not talking about your father, your mother, your brother. He's talking about your enemy. And who is not the biggest enemy if the one in the mirror? Who is our biggest challenge and the biggest opportunity of all. Can you change anybody else? So we're going to follow this, this prayer here. This is only one, one chapter in this book. He says, Lord, help us recognize what is available to us. You see how much is giving? How much we get from the top every time, every day. But only allow us to recognize this in order for us to learn to make the best of it according to our capacity. Where is evil? On the fact or on the use of whatever it is? Right? So we come here to this fear zone. I got out of my couch and I stand in fear. Am I ready? Do I know enough? Can I do this? Am I capable of this? Right? And then they tell us that fear is one of the worst evils. It's paralyzing. It is contagious. Can you see somebody in fear? I'm afraid of getting out because I'm going to be robbed. Because bad things can happen. All of a sudden, nobody's going out of the house anymore. And how do we learn to control this fear? The recipe is everywhere when we, stu when we start studying here. It's prayer, first of all. What is prayer? Is it the words? Is it a set of words that has a magic uh, effect of liberating us from fear? Do we need words in our prayers? No. What do we need in our prayers? Just our connection. Our connection to something higher than us. right? We need to acknowledge this fear. We need to understand that it exists. We need to understand what causes it, where it comes from. How do we do that? We've got to learn, accept, allow it to come out, 
And the only way to do this is by self-awareness. If I don't know what's inside me, there's no way that this fear is going to be recognized. There's no way that I'm going to allow this fear to come out. And if I don't allow it to come out, I will never, never overcome it, let go, dismiss it. There's no other way. So I stepped out of the fear. I decided to come here, learn. I decided to go out, study. I decided to look into myself and open the book of my heart and understand what's going on in there. I accept the challenge. I look into the mirror. I learn to brush my hair better, brush my thoughts better, clean up my feelings in the shower, right? Bringing better, better stuff from inside. And I start to expand my comfort zone. I become, mm, this is my new couch now. So in a solar, it's a book that we are studying on, on Mondays here. It's from Francisco Candido Xavier too. And the mentor in that book, the, 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 the master in that book, the professor, he says, if you want spiritual healing, you have to learn not to talk about yourself so much or comment on your pain. Every pain loves another pain. No? Mourning is a symptom of mental illness very difficult to treat. Once we start, it's very hard to stop. And once we start, it's very easy to find company. You must create new thoughts and control your words. Oh my gosh. The ones who speak too much, the ones who talk too much, careful with the words that you choose. We become balanced when we open our heart to the light of the divine inside ourselves. Not The light is not outside. Once we understand that, everything changes. Right? We take new approaches. We change the way we talk. We, we change the way we think. We change the way we deal with others. All of a sudden, it's a lot easier to be with us. So in this book, this is the, 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 the training that I'm going through since the study that I'm, I'm doing here. That I, that, that's the reason I brought this. She's going to say, it's from Joanna de Angelis, the book, and it, it was written by uh, uh, Divaldo Franco. She says, everything starts in the mind. The mind, Emmanuel says in one of his books, is the mirror of our own conscience. So if my mirror is that little teeny tiny one, right? So my conscience is still teeny tiny. Whatever it is reflecting is going to be teeny tiny. Everything starts in the mind. And there we will find the matrix for actions, the basis for actions. It's all in our minds. The practice of good thoughts Eliminating the harmful ones to which we are addicted to is a vital step to our self-awareness. So we're going to see that, we're going to learn that harmful thoughts are addictive. So we have to take care of this. And many times we need help. We need help, professional help. We need psychological help. We need spiritual help. Where does this help come from? Continue our prayer. Lord, inspire us, teaching us the, to value the friends you gave us. Remember where the help is coming from? But more importantly, help us accept them as they are. And the biggest friend is still is on the mirror. So I guess we got 
we expanded our comfort zone to that big, big green, oh, big circle. So we are still fed by our desires, still fed by our dreams, by the goals that we, that we trace, but all of a sudden they became much, much bigger than that teeny, tiny red circle, right? So when they say get out of your comfort zone, it's like get out of this box, right? Think outside of the box. And outside of the box is where all this magic happens, is where life starts flourishing, is where things look much, much better, bigger. So I didn't bring a movie for you guys tonight, but I brought a story. I read this on the news, and some of you may have read too. But the story is, the read, it's kind of a riddle story. Um, you are in the car, you are driving your car, and you drive through a bus stop. There are three people, in your car you can only take one person, okay? You have, if you have a five passenger car, you have three with you and one, one seat. You go, you drive through a bus stop and there's three people standing there. One is an old lady who needs, who has a health problem, needs help immediately. The second person is your best friend from a lifetime that knows you from the longest time. The third one is your soulmate. What would you do? Any ideas? Who would you take? Or what would you do? What would be your choice? This was a question in an interview for a job. Do you guys want to know what was the answer of the person who got the job? I would give the key to my best, the key to my car, to my best friend, to take the lady to the hospital, and I would stay with my soulmate waiting for the bus. Wow. <laughs> so, getting out of our comfort zone involves um, pain. It's very painful to get let go of our old self, but it involves growth and growth learning always bring joy. It brings a satisfaction that is physical. Parts of our brain lightens up when we learn something new. Parts of our brain, when you comprehend something, there's that ah moment. So it's like finding this treasure that's been buried there and it's been such a long time waiting for us and we need that. We have all the time, we have eternity, right? We have our lives forever. But the investment that has been made for this moment to happen with the people that we have around us, with the family that we have, the friends that we have, and the possibilities that we have today, who would have thought that you would carry a computer in your hands, in your pocket? 10 years ago, okay. and today, it's possible. Remember that impossible? It's just a word, it's just an opinion. Impossible is nothing. So this is always, there is always an invitation for us to come out, to be our better self, to grow knowing that there is all the possibilities available for us and more will come as we get better, as we grow better. Want to say something? Yeah, I want to share about that. It's very, uh, you, do you mind coming here? No. So every, because have we have... comfortable zone for the second time. Yay, yeah, good job. Um, okay, so speaking of comfortable zone, I was invited this week 
to really get out of my comfortable, comfortable zone. Um, the challenge was to climb a pole 10, 10, feet, 10 foot tall. And as we climb the pole, we have to stand up on the top of the pole, holding nothing. And when I start going up, I say, I don't think I can stand up. I can, I can climb because there is ways to hold. And then, as you mentioned, friendship, peer, is all we have. It's so very important. As I'm climbing and fearful that I cannot stand up, I start hearing my name. Rosie, you can do this, you can do this. Go, Rosie, yes, we got your back. Go, go, go. And little I knew how much power I had. I was able to go, stand up, and observe the beach that was in Marco Island, Florida, and observe the beach, and then try to reach to the trapeze. There was a trapeze, and I tried to reach. Unfortunately, my arms were too short, but I, I tried. And, um, but, and then I jumped. It was amazing, the, f the feeling, and I was so glad that I, I got out of my comfortable zone, and I did it. So it was very good. So this is the second time. I'm very fearful of public speaking. I am sick. And I think it's boring. <laughs> so that's the second time. Who's next? <laughs> I hope this is contagious, right? But thank you so much for, for coming, and I, I wish you all a very um, wonderful evening, wonderful dreams. May your dreams bring you way, way beyond your comfort zone. Thank you so much. <laughs>